Master Reddit, subscribe for more videos. What is a fact that can possibly save your life? If a tornado looks like it isn't moving, it's heading right towards you. I've never been in one, but apparently if one is near it sounds like a train. There's a video of an old man recording an EF4 tornado as bears down on his house. The sound of it is absolutely horrific. Maybe not your life, but someone else's. Most drowning is silent. The victim quite literally cannot speak to call for help, as they are too desperately trying to get any air at all. Drowning can look simply like a person bobbing in the water until they no longer come back up. Keep a watch out. Especially if it's kids. I came here to comment something about drowning. I've seen lots and lots, maybe hundreds, of people in the early stages of drowning, and it's definitely not at all like the movies. The movement of the swimmer can alert you to the fact that they're drowning. Most swimmers, in my experience, exhibit what we call climbing the ladder. Their face is upturned as they gasp for air, and you can see their arms furiously moving as if they're trying to literally climb a ladder out of the water. It's pretty well explained in this video, https colon slash slash youtube slash qb1 wk35 pro. I've only had a handful of incidents where the swimmer has shouted slash screamed. Definitely the exception to the rule. Always pays to be vigilant around water, it's pretty unforgiving. And please always have eyes on children as they play and slash around water. Drowning can happen ridiculously quickly. This is a New Zealand specific one, but all emergency numbers work here. The official number is 111. But 999,911, etc. will all work. This is so the tourists can still reach emergency services easily. If you are ever buried in rubble, earthquake, tornado, building collapse etc. Don't shout. You'll lose your voice and waste energy. Instead, grab a piece of rubble and knock in patterns of threes. Humans are expert pattern makers and pattern notices. Rescuers will hear the distinctive pattern sound and go toward it. Once you can hear people, then use your voice. Edit, cite my source. I learned this from the podcast The Big One. It's about how to realistically survive a massive earthquake day by day with certain scenarios. Try and stay near pipes slash radiators and bang them. Do not delay getting out of a burning building. The flames are not what will kill you. The smoke will get very thick and toxic very quickly and you will not be able to see the way to get out. Stay low and go, go, go. The oxygen is down near the floor. And don't think a handkerchief over your face will do shit. A wet towel can help in tandem with staying low. Keep the smoke from burning your lungs. But yay, it's not like you'll be able to just walk out normally doing that. All firearms are loaded. Even if they are not, they are. True. Even if you remove the mag there still could be a live round inside the chamber. Even if you remove the mag, cycle the action visually and physically inspect the chamber, you still treat the firearm like it's loaded. If you get impaled or stabbed leave the object in and call 911, or your country's equal, that object is keeping all the blood on the inside of your body. If the wound is still bleeding, wrap cloth around the impaled object to try and stem the flow of blood. You can look up how to do a donut wrap, it's super quick and easy. If your cloth saturated with blood, cover it with another. Never take off a bandage. Why shouldn't you take off the bandage? The blood will already be in the starting stages of clotting with the original cloth, and removing it will cause a resurgence in flow. If your car goes into the water, open the door or roll down the windows immediately. If you don't, the pressure differential will hold them shut and you'll have to wait until the car fills up with water. Edit, a lot of people are telling me that on newer cars, the headrest poles can be used to break a window. I'm not sure if that's true, because headrests I've seen are just made of ordinary steel, and the ends aren't particularly pointy. A dedicated window breaker will have a sharp point made of an ultra-hard material. Does anyone know if newer headrests are actually made for this? Edit 2, it seems headrests are not designed specifically to break windows, but they can in a pinch if the proper technique is used, and they can actually be removed. Putting the point in the corner of the window and slamming the headrest, my buddy did a master's thesis on exactly this and I was able to test out this scenario several times. If you go into the water, get out ASAP. Don't wait roll down the windows and get out. The electronics of the car should still work long enough to roll them down. Don't wait until there is equal pressure. You could be upside down at the bottom of a lake wedged between an object. React and move as fast as you can. If you ever almost drown to the point of throwing up water or passing out, even if you feel 100% fine, get to a hospital. Your lungs can unwittingly self-fill up with fluid over the next few hours. 
Secondary drowning is no joke. More people definitely need to be aware of the dangers. Secondary or delayed drowning happens when a child inhales water into his or her lungs, causing inflammation or edema, swelling. The edema can occur hours or even days after the initial contact with water. Death from delayed drowning is due to swelling of the small air sacs in the lungs, preventing oxygen from entering the bloodstream. Some info. If someone is in trouble and you want to leap in to save them, make sure you have a way to get out yourself. I recently saw a video of a drowning man. Another man jumped in to try and save him. Instead both drowned. I've seen several news stories of someone getting stuck in a riptide and their family goes to save them and then they all drowned. If you smell a fish smell in your house, some people also report a urine-like smell, for no reason, 9 times out of 10 it means there's an electrical fire. I actually was the hero in this situation. Was visiting my sister a number of years back. Hanging out on her couch. Smelled a smell of urine, with a bit of dead fish mixed in, I asked her what that was. She answered, it's been here for weeks. We think a rat or squirrel got trapped in the walls. That didn't sound right to me. A dead animal would smell different. And for whatever reason, I googled smells like urine. Electrical fire was the first answer. So, I sniffed all around the room. And found it was coming from the plug of an old lamp. Unplugged it, odor vanished. Instant hero. When having a heart attack, you don't swallow aspirin, you chew it. Is this real? Gets to the bloodstream faster through the walls of the mouth. If you get kidnapped try to leave as much traces of yourself behind as you can. For example leave bits of clothing behind or scratch your arms a lot to leave dead skin behind. This way you increase your chances that a search dog could pick up your scent and find you. I watched a crime show once where the victim left her hair everywhere in her abductor's car. She kept pulling single strands of hair out. When she was taken to the house of the person who took her, she pulled more hair out, touched everything she could to leave fingerprints behind, and even licked multiple places in his house. She managed to escape and they found evidence of her all over his car and house. Slam shut case. I wish I could remember her name so I could look her case up. This happened for real? Goddamn. Good on her for being cunning. Different case, but Kate Moyer, who survived being abducted and raped by a serial killer couple in Western Australia, hid items in their house where they took her. She escaped the house, and was able to lead police there and prove she had been there. The couple had murdered four women before her. Side note about kidnapping, if someone threatens you, even with a gun, to get in their car, it may be best to run for it. Most people are terrible shots and don't want to attract the attention gunfire would cause and once they have you your odds of a good outcome plummet. If the ocean is retreating there is a tsunami coming, evacuate the beach immediately. If the animals are running, I'm going to follow them. Maybe they are running because you are following them? When will you stop? Dear God there's a tsunami coming and this dude won't stop chasing me. Or if you experience a large earthquake near the coast you should evacuate. As earthquakes are one of if not the leading causes of tsunamis. Damn 2k upvotes. 3k. 4k. If your vomit look like coffee ground, you are bleeding internally, you need to go to the hospital. Coffee ground vomiting. I read somewhere if a stranger gets in your car and tells you to take them somewhere or drive into something like a lamp post or anything. You won't be useful to them anymore because the car is damaged and you've drawn attention to them by crashing the car. You'll damage your car but you'll have your life and your bank account. Someone at my college did this a few years ago, the guy told him to drive to the bank and withdraw all his money so he drove into a lamp post and saved himself. Don't do this if you're an Uber driver. My wife was born and raised in Colombia, her dad is a doctor. Back in the 90s some of his cousins kidnapped him in order to steal his money and kill him. He faked a heart attack and they panicked, ended up tossing him out of the car. He's still with us today. Colombians are some crazy motherfuckers. The Pierce Hawthorne Method There are no rules if a stranger puts their hands on you. Yell, scream bloody murder, kick, bite, make the biggest scene you possibly can and run away as fast as you can. Make sure your kids understand that this is the exception, the time they must draw as much attention as possible and do anything it takes to get away and get help. Had this conversation with my son the other day. He's a very hyper and loud kid and I told him if anyone ever grabs him he needs to be louder than he's ever been able to be. I also told him if he gets grabbed anything goes, hold hair, ears, poke eyes, anything all while screaming. We practiced getting out of different holds too. Having children is the most stressful thing ever haha. <laughs> If you're being tied up, puff yourself out as much as possible so it'll be easier to wiggle out of. 
Tense muscles, inhale deep and stretch out your arms and legs to make more space. Me and my classmates used to have competitions where we'd tie each other up with rope, it started out with hands but it went to full body, and we'd time ourselves on how fast we could get out. It was also good practice for tying someone up since we got to see which methods worked best. I used to pull this trick all the time and get the fastest time. My hands would be really red and there would be lots of marks, but it was worth it. And that kids, is how I found my fetish. Maybe not your life but possibly others. In an emergency situation pick one person to specifically call 911. In lots of stressful or emergency situations there are significant delays in calling 911. Some people assume that others will call 911 while other panic slash freeze up and don't think to call 911. If you're faced with a situation where 911 is necessary, pick a specific person to contact 911. This one's pretty obvious, but if someone's grabbing you, it's usually easy to break the hold by grabbing their thumb. Can't hold shit so well without your thumb. I'm glad I haven't had the opportunity to use this next one, but I've been taught that if someone is trying to assault you or kidnap you, and you manage to get him on the ground, prop his leg up on something, kneecap facing upward, and fucking jump on that goddamn knee. Can't chase or kidnap you if he can't fucking walk. Added to add, the thumb thing I've found great when trying to break a hold without doing damage, lots of people have been talking about pinkies instead when you're fine with damage, which is great advice. Also, don't do the second one if you can help it. End at it. If you're visiting an unfamiliar location like a cinema or concert hall, take a few moments to look around for the nearest exit, then pick out a second as a backup in case the first becomes blocked or cut off. If something happens, especially in a crowded public place, most people's first instincts are to turn around and head for the main entrance but this is not always the closest, safest or easiest way out. 9 times out of 10 there will usually be a closer exit. Probably said already but, bad CPR is better than no, even if you're unskilled. You literally cannot make the person more dead, as being dead is what predicates CPR. If you have a puncture wound to the chest or abdomen, the first thing you should do is place a non-porous think plastic bag, object over the wound, it will help prevent tension pneumothorax. A tourniquet is quite simple to put on and can save a life if there is no other option. Place close to the side or near not on, a joint. Never remove a tourniquet once placed, as clots can travel to the brain and lungs. Also mark the time you put it on. If you're at an accident scene and have no medical training, something you can do is collect information and help calm victims. This is quite helpful as it assists the paramedics with triage and keeps potential injured person's heart rates down. Alternatively, learn how to hold C-spine. If your car ever gets stuck on the train tracks, look for a sign on the crossing arms, this is the railway 911 and has a number to call to stop traffic as well as your exact location. If you've been cut deeply pack gauze into the wound as tightly as possible then hold pressure. If you are driving in inclement weather pay attention to truckers, they are often warned ahead of time of wrecks and things due to their radios. Also never drive in the rain without headlights. When you're in Australia, mostly on beaches, do not touch the tiny adorable octopus with blue rings it's venomous and will usually kill you. In fact, don't touch any snakes or spiders or marine life, a lot of it is poisonous, venomous or will kill you in other ways. Don't let this stop you from coming to Australia though, most of the humans are pretty nice. Edit. Word mix up edit too, holy crap my biggest comment is about not poking Australian animals. If you're lost in the wilderness and need something sharp to hunt slash defend with, make a spear by hardening a soaked branch slash stick over a fire. The water prevents the stick from burning, but the heat from the fire forces the branch to condense and harden making them more durable. Bear survival guide, if it's black, make sure you aren't standing in between it and food slash its babies. If it's approaching you and you have made sure that you aren't stopping it from reaching food or its babies, make yourself seem bigger than you are, scream and make noises. Black bears are more cowardly than their brother brown and polar bears, so they get scared easily, so they try to avoid confrontation. If it's brown, sit in fetal position, play dead and hope it won't think of you as food, and to leave you alone, don't make yourself seem a threat. If it's white, you're ducked. I've heard something similar. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, stay down. If it's white, say good night. Edit, thanks for the award. It's my first one. If you call 911 even though you don't have signal, it will work. Do not inflate your life jacket before exiting the aircraft. This is especially true in case of emergency water landings. 
As any air safety expert would tell you, inflating your life jacket inside a rapidly submerging airplane will cause you to float up to the cabin ceiling, unable to move without help. The right thing to do is to take a deep breath and swim out of the airplane with your life jacket still deflated. Only when you're safely out of the plane should you pull the inflation cord. If you start feeling dizzy, nauseated, lightheaded, dull headache, go outside for 10 meters, go back to the room you started feeling this. If it starts again, it is most likely carbon monoxide poisoning. Also if someone has lost consciousness, get them the duck out of there. If there is an earthquake, do not go down or up any stairs. They collapse. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and comment below letting me know. It helps the channel and lets me create more content just like this. If you do like this type of content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload.